Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today we're going to talk about the Society of St. Paul, specifically here in Canfield, Ohio. And joining me today is a local superior, Father Matt Rorig. Father Matt, welcome to our show. Thanks, Father Jim. Good to be here. You know, we've had um, some of your confers on the show before uh, of happy memory, Father Jeff Mickler, who's done a lot with us in the past. And so this is, I think, the first time that you're really with us. You've been on Wineskins before, but it's nice to have you on Spotlight. So we'd like to kind of get to know a little bit more about the society through you. So give us a little background into the beginnings of the Society of St. Paul. Well, uh, the Society of St. Paul was uh, founded in 1914 by Blessed James Alberioni, primarily to use the media to communicate the uh, gospel message. And we're now in about 39 countries around the world. And I was just looking up the statistics. We used to be about 2,000 members. Unfortunately, we're down to about 850 members now. And um, so we have been using in the United States um, for many years Alba House Publishing. Many people here in the, the Youngstown area would be familiar with those. Um, titles, and then um, we're now known as St. Paul's Books and Gifts. So we're still a publishing house. We're still putting out uh, materials, but we're trying to expand. We have e-books. We have um, uh, more uh, media-oriented materials that are available nowadays. But it's primarily what can we use in the media mm -hmm. to communicate the gospel message. And let's talk specifically about the charism, which basically is about the media and the use of that. And tell us primarily what a charism is for a religious congregation and how you celebrate that in the society. Well, when we talk about charism, we talk about maybe, uh, we talk about the, the charismatic gifts that we get from the Holy Spirit. So these are the gifts or the abilities that different groups have. So the different religious congregations will have what their main focus is. And again, we use uh, the media and publishing and uh, over the, Around the world, we have newspapers, we have uh, radio stations and television stations and the things that we are doing. And so while we're presenting these technical aspects, we often add our very spiritual nature, again, mm -hmm. focusing on the teaching and the magisterium of the church, what the Holy Father is saying, what our uh, bishops are saying, the leaders are saying, make sure the message is out there. So a lot of our materials is to strengthen people, strengthen their understanding of the faith. And then we are a deep prayer uh, community that we pray for the media, we pray for its use, and pray for people reading it so that they will be able to deepen their faith as well. Uh, one thing that, that many religious congregations, and especially even diocesan and priests, uh, we see a decline, we see fewer numbers, and yet that ministry and that charism continues to be uh, celebrated. Uh, and oftentimes through, through lay people, how has um, this whole sense of the laity being involved in the Society of St. Paul continues and continued the charisms? Well, we do it in a number of ways. First of all, uh, over the years, we have um, 10 branches of what we call our Pauline family, and one of the branches what we call our Pauline cooperators. These are lay men and women who help us and assist us, whether it's financially, whether it's spiritually, whether it's physically helping us either in the mm -hmm. store, in the publishing house, in doing exhibits or whatever the case may be. So they've been very much a part of it. Now, over the years, we've had a number of lay people that will assist us mm -hmm. as our employees, um, not necessarily officially titled cooperators, sure. but they're there to assist us. And many times we would not have been able to do some of the things that we're doing. Uh, for example, here for the years that we had uh, Alba House, and we had three stores, we're down now to one, but we had three stores. Mm -hmm. Um, we had the lay people helping us and assisting us so that we could be able to do the things that we are doing. So it's very essential that they are helping us do that. And then with our lay people who are part of the Pauline family and the other um, areas, the consecrated life, 
um, they also assist us in many ways as well. We're going to talk more about those particular uh, institutions and congregations that are part of under the umbrella of the Society of St. Paul, but I'd like to go back to your founder, uh, Blessed James Alberioni. When was he declared blessed? And prior to that, what got him interested in using the media for uh, God's glory? I believe he was made blessed in 1993, but I may be wrong on <laughs> that right. one. So <laughs> someone will have to maybe clarify that. But he was one who, um, at the turn of the 19th to the 20th century as a seminarian, uh, prayed about doing something for the, the new century. Mm -hmm. And as he began his ministry as a priest in the Diocese of Alba, Italy, uh, he was actually given um, the directorship of uh, the Gazzetta di Alba, which was the diocesan newspaper. Mm -hmm. And he began to see that people were reading this, but in the meantime, the secular government, the secular leadership of Italy at that time, was not really presenting a very good mm -hmm. Christian message. Mm -hmm. And he felt, oh, there's a need to get this message out there, whether it be the actual teaching of the church, whether it's what the Holy Father was saying, what the bishops were saying, um, reading the Bible, reading uh, about the catechism and things of that nature. So that's when he began to say, what can I to do with, mm -hmm. to get that out there and then it developed into saying hey I need some dedicated men and women religious mm -hmm. who are going to focus on that and not see it merely as a job but it's a ministry it's an, an apostolate and how we can do that and so over the years that's um, he began to blossom in that way you know when we talk about religious congregations uh, many of those congregations go back to uh, centuries but the Society of St. Paul is in in uh, I guess church terms fairly new and recent. Uh, why has that been a blessing in a nutshell in the advancement of this charism? Well, while we may look and say that some people over the centuries were using their expertise in preaching mm -hmm. and um, sharing the gospel message within their parishes, uh, it was only, I think, in the 20th century that the, the, the media began to pick up and to grow. Mm -hmm. And as our founder said, our pulpit is the media. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use that. So while we may still be preaching and maybe still be uh, giving talks or what have you, mm -hmm. it, it's a matter of going in. So I think it was sort of at the right time that our founder uh, the, the came in and started using the technology. And then even in the last 40 years that I've been in the congregation, I mean, the, the internet and the right. social media and all the things that we're doing now were not even thought of even 40 years ago. And so it's just exploding. And so how much we can hold on to that and begin to utilize, I think is very essential. So uh, again, I think it's a blessing that the, the Pauline family sort of uh, was founded here within the last hundred or so years. Mm -hmm. we're we talk more about that and the founder in a moment, but we need to take a quick break. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. In this biblical year of the Pauline family, renew yourself through the study and reading of the Word of God in the sacred scriptures. Deepen the Word of God in your life with the help of scripture scholars like the late Father Jerome Murphy O'Connor in his CD presentation, on the life of St. Paul. This riveting presentation draws upon a lifetime of scholarship and reflection, challenging the traditions and contemporary understanding of St. Paul. For more information, contact Brother Dominic at 330-533-2243 or email brdomctny at aol.com. Join us each week for Music and the Spoken Word, featuring the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square, the longest-running, continuous weekly network broadcast in the world, celebrating over 90 years on the air. Each episode features modern and traditional arrangements of spiritual, patriotic, classical, and contemporary music, and a timely, inspiring message. Music and the Spoken Word with the Tabernacle Choir. 
Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm talking with Father Matt Rorg, who is a local superior of the Society of St. Paul here in Canfield. You know, Father Matt, one of the areas that I think we'd like to focus on now is uh, what I call in layman's term the year of the Bible. But uh, it's the biblical year of the Pauline family, and it's also in relationship to uh, the 50th anniversary of the death of Blessed James O'Barioni. So talk about that uh, special year. We were asked by our general governments of all the Pauline family, which there are 10 branches, and there are most famous in the United States are the Daughters of St. Paul or the Sister Disciples of the Divine Master and ourselves, even though all the rep uh, Pauline branches are uh, here in the U.S. except for one, and we hope to get them here at some point. But it's how we can focus on getting the Bible into focus in people's lives. And so we started in November of last year. Our founder's 50th anniversary of his death will be in November of this year. Uh, 2021. 2021. And so uh, what we were able to try to do, and so many uh, countries around the world are doing different things. And what we have decided to do is we've set up with our other branches uh, a Facebook page called Pauline Encounters. Mm and the last Sunday or Saturday of every month, one of the branches of the Pauline family will have their members reflect mm -hmm. upon how do they use the word in their life. So we began uh, last year, 2020, on Thanksgiving Day was the actual um, anniversary of the, of the death of the founder. Mm -hmm. So I did an opening mass on Thanksgiving Day, sort of opening our biblical year and we'll run through November of this year. So um, we've had a few of the branches already share their reflections and we'll run all the way up through the end of next year uh, offering some thoughts on the Bible. Let's talk about the Bible. You know, for us as Catholics, uh, at least growing up, we didn't always read the Bible. You know, probably most Catholic families had a Bible, but whether or not we opened it was another thing. Why is the uh, reading uh, and praying of the Bible and uh, study of the Bible become mo more important for us, not only as Catholics, but as, as Christian people? Well, my reflection goes back to the Second Vatican Council because I think that was the change over that people said, hey, you know, we can read the Bible. <laughs> you know, it's not just our, uh, our fellow Christians who are doing it, but uh, Catholics began to be very interested in reading it. And I remember the Catholic Bible Society and, and other places were starting um, to put out um, new editions for people to read and various uh, versions and what have you. And even now, more and more people are beginning to do some Bible study, and especially with the, the media that's out there, especially during this past year with the pandemic, mm -hmm. I've had a number of people said, hey, I've gone on and, and done some Bible study, and I've watched um, mm -hmm. uh, downloads and things that have helped us get an understanding, because I think they're beginning to realize what we're sharing with them at the Sunday Mass, weekday Mass, mm -hmm. the Word of God is important for them, and they're beginning to read it and study it a little bit better and understanding how it applies to their faith. And so having a Bible is very essential for them. And as uh, the Society of St. Paul, who uh, uses the media uh, to promote the Word of God, how do you do that uh, with the, the actual Bible itself? What are some means of communication that the society uses to promote the Bible? Well, one of the things that we have done uh, here in the United States a number of years ago, we did a real nice, fancy New Testament edition. It was a very thick book, so sometimes it was out of place because people like the, the, the smaller books, but uh, it got people to read and reflect. Uh, and in our English-speaking world, our uh, confreres in India have come out mm -hmm. a couple of years ago with the new Community Bible, and they took like 15 years mm -hmm. to work on that, get the theologians, get all the, the scripture scholars and everything ready. So now we can promote uh, the new Community Bible, mm -hmm. uh, which we have on our website, which is our own publication from the Society of St. Paul. Uh, we, with the Daughters of St. Paul, they have developed a few apps that will get them to read about the Psalms, read about the various scriptures, uh, read about even some of the devotional prayers and the things that we are doing. So by trying to utilize that. Uh, you had mentioned um, 
our, our late confrere, Father Jeff Mickler, mm -hmm. who uh, is still on YouTube. If people go on YouTube, they'll mm -hmm. find lots of videos that he has done. Mm -hmm. He's done a large series on uh, St. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're trying to use whatever we can to get people um, and to get a Bible into their homes, which is what our founder tried to do uh, when he first started. Yeah. Let's uh, segue into, uh, you had mentioned about those 10 different um, lack of a better word, groups uh, that fall under the, the umbrella of the Society of St. Paul. Uh, when Blessed James Alberioni began the, um, the Society of St. Paul, did he envision this, this growth, this exponential growth, or was he focused more on priests and brothers? Well, I think um, it sort of evolved to all the various groups. He started with the Society of St. Paul Priests and Brothers, mm -hmm. And then uh, he found the daughters of St. Paul because they were able as women to go out into various areas that we men could not uh, get to. And then out of the uh, daughters of St. Paul who are also publishers, mm -hmm. then he created the Sister Disciples of the Divine Master who provided the spiritual basis. So they're a semi-contemplative sure. group that uh, does liturgical um, ministries and support mm -hmm. of priests and liturgical vessels and what have you and their right. prayer. And then he said, well, we need to uh, get uh, people into the parishes. So the Sisters of the Good Shepherd, and we have a group in Chicago now, um, they help out in parishes. And then he said, well, we need to promote vocations, not only for the Pauline family, but we need people to actively focus on praying. So we have the Apostoline Sisters, Sisters of Mary, Queen of Apostle, who pray for vocations and promote vocations in the church. And then we had uh, lay people, which was actually one of the early groups I had mentioned, mm -hmm. the Pauline cooperators. And out of this group, there were people who say, I want to do a little bit more. And so we have uh, later, I think it was in the 1960s when they really started with what we call our aggregated institutes mm -hmm. for single men, single women, mm -hmm. who were able to devote themselves as consecrated persons mm -hmm. uh, to commit themselves to sharing the message of the Word of God in their respective areas, wherever they work and whatever they are doing. And then he said, well, one of the ways you get is diocesan priests. So we had mm -hmm. Jesus priest, Institute because these were diocesan priests who knew about Blessed Alberioni, knew who we were and interested in doing something, but they didn't want to leave you know, the ministry they were doing in the parish, so they were doing that. And finally, the last group is the Holy Family Institute where married couples uh, can consecrate themselves and how can they teach their children and live within the family to, to reach the gospel. So I think it sort of was a progressive growing through all the, sure. the different areas in that area at the time. In our last segment, which we're going to take a break before, and we're going to talk specifically about the Holy Family Institute, but we're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In this biblical year of the Pauline family, renew yourself through the study and reading of the Word of God in the sacred scriptures. Deepen the Word of God in your life with the help of scripture scholars like the late Father Jerome Murphy O'Connor in his CD presentation entitled, The Historical Jesus, Fact and Fiction. Father Murphy O'Connor challenges his listeners to be the answer to humanity's universal cry for justice and love in the world through the person of Jesus Christ. For more information, contact Brother Dominic at 330-533-2243 or email brdomctny at aol.com. Join us each week for Music and the Spoken Word, featuring the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square, the longest-running continuous weekly network broadcast in the world, celebrating over 90 years on the air. In this biblical year of the Pauline family, renew yourself through the study and reading of the Word of God in the Sacred Scriptures. Deepen the Word of God in your life with the help of Scripture scholars like the late Father Jerome Murphy O'Connor in his CD presentation on the life of St. Paul. This riveting presentation draws upon a lifetime of scholarship and reflection 
challenging the traditions and contemporary understanding of St. Paul. For more information, contact Brother Dominic at 330-533-2243 or email brdomctny at aol.com. Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Father Matt Rorg of the Society of St. Paul. You know, Father Matt, in our last segment, we were talking about the institutions and uh, one of the final ones that you mentioned was the Holy Family Institute. Uh, that is something that I'm familiar with because uh, many of them come here, at least in the past, prior to the pandemic, uh, to celebrate their uh, affiliation with the Society of St. Paul. So tell us about the Holy Family Institute and what it's all about and how those that are with us might learn more about it. Well, the Holy Family Institute was the last institute in the mind of our founder. And he really started thinking about it just a few years before his death in 1971. So it was like 1970 mm -hmm. that they finally got the approval and what have you. And it's for married couples, uh, widow and widowers as well, mm -hmm. uh, who want to commit themselves a little bit to the teaching of the church. And so they are consecrated. Uh, members, so they take the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience within the structure of their uh, married life. So they're not taking the same vows that I am. And then they're also focusing uh, with the Holy Family and their connection to the Society of St. Paul. Mm -hmm. How can they use the media to uh, help focus? So they will support our endeavors. They may be writers themselves. They mm -hmm. may be using the media to communicate the Word of God. And as you mentioned, um, for many years, we had Father Tom Fogarty, who was the director mm -hmm. of that institute and stationed here in mm -hmm. Canfield. Mm -hmm. And so this is the, the main office that is here, and I took over several years ago as the director of the institute. Let's talk about some of the people that are part of the Holy Family Institute. Are they young and old? They come from different backgrounds, different walks of life. Uh, what is kind of the makeup of who they are? Uh, we come from all over the United States. And some of our members here are actually um, outside the U.S., but they're still connected with us. Uh, and they are young and old, um, many of them leaning towards the older because we've been around for sure. 25 or so years. Uh, but they are um, committing themselves in various areas to the groups in prayer and support mm -hmm. and uh, supporting their own uh, local area. We have about... Um, 25 or 30 in this area that come every month and we have mm -hmm. a, a mass and a holy hour and we discuss various issues that mm -hmm. are going out there. We have an annual triduum where we try to bring people from all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually go up to the National Basilica or the Shrine of Our Lady of Lebanon mm -hmm. uh, and it's a good weekend for all the people to come together. But it's mm -hmm. both young and old and we're starting to have a, a lot of new ones that have mm -hmm. their children and now even some of the children are, are sure. thinking of uh, the Holy Family as they get older and start having their own families as well. Is, is it safe to say that that's kind of like the future of the society of continuing the mission and the charism of the, of the order? I think in many ways uh, because of the fact that um, some of the children of the Holy Family members uh, have entered the Daughters of St. Paul, they have entered our other aggregated institutes, they may think of the Society of St. Paul, and then some of them, as I said, some of them uh, are now getting married themselves and they saw what their parents were involved in, mm -hmm. and it's from there that they are able to support the local church. So they're going to be involved and say, how, how can we use the media, how can we support right. our parish priest, how can we promote vocations, how we can get people very much interested in the church. So the family is the core mm -hmm. of, of our church, I think, and I think the Holy Family is a very strong part of that. You know, 50 years uh, since the passing of your founder, Blessed James Abarioni, uh, which is not that long ago, uh, what would some of those future goals be for the Society of St. Paul in looking at those 10 different institutions that make up uh, the whole order, uh, how do you see them uh, expanding or, or growing or uh, focusing on what really is important to carry on the mission of, of James O'Barrione? 
I think one of the things that we have been working on here in the United States in particular uh, over the last number of years, and even with our Pauline encounters for our biblical year, I think as people listen to that, they begin to understand the other branches of the Pauline family that were not all individual. Mm -hmm. So as are those of us who are in consecrated religious life say, okay, here we have these consecrated lay people. Mm -hmm. How can they work with us? How can they assist with us? How can we do the ministry and pray and support and encourage one another? And I think mm -hmm. that's the legacy of how can we work together and we're not all separate, we're not all <laughs> differently, but we're coming together. Yeah. I know in one of the segments you mentioned the uh, website of the society. Tell us about that and what are some of the things that they could find on the website? Well, the website for us is uh, stpauls.us. Um, it's our publishing house website, but also you can get a little bit of information about uh, us. Um, on Facebook, uh, if you do Pauline Encounters, that is the one that is putting up information during this um, mm -hmm. uh, biblical year, and then you can get connections to the other branches of the Pauline family. Every group, I think, has their own particular website, so by going there, you'll be able to get some of the information um, on, on the different groups. In our last uh, few minutes of our time together, I'd like to go back to the biblical year. Uh, what is, is one thing that, that the folks that are with us can do to learn more about the Bible or to uh, understand better God's Word and how they could be evangelizers? Well, first of all, I would encourage them if they have a Bible at home, read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because uh, it, it, some of them have it on their shelves, on their coffee tables, and they don't yeah. really read it. Read it, pray about it. Um, there are lots of additions out there that would help them do it. I would say go on the media and find um, different uh, websites that will help them understand uh, the study of the Bible. Uh, there's a lot of programs uh, out there. I want to go through all the lists because there's a lot of them that are very good that if they can start reading that, um, that would be the first part of really deepening their spirituality. And finally, one quick note about the Holy Family Institute. If someone would like to get more information, what they do. Uh, we have our own website, hfiusa.org, and that will connect them with us. Uh, they can contact me here at uh, St. Paul Monastery, and uh, I'll be glad to answer any of their questions, and they can even come join us at our monthly gatherings. Father Matt Rorg, it was a pleasure to have you on Spotlight, and especially uh, in this biblical year, um, celebrating the Society of St. Paul, also lifting up your founder, uh, celebrating his uh, death, but also his uh, new life with the Lord, and also anticipation uh, of future canonization. Thanks, so thank Father you. Jim. Good to You're be welcome. here. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day, and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda.